Morning, Nancy, Gwendolyn, Myra. Hi, Renata. Nice to meet you. We'll start in a few minutes. People are still coming in from the waiting room. Meanwhile, I do want to welcome you all to our Osher Lecture Series. Today's April 14th. You know, there's some music in the background from our presenters for today. Coming in from the waiting room. Good morning. Good morning, Denise. Meanwhile, if you open up your if you open up your chat room, you're gonna see a message from our presenter, Kara. Asking to please share with her the craziest thing you bought online because you on lockdown. I mean, or, can you repeat we're on. Sorry, should have read that first. <laughs> okay, so to share something that you bought online, the craziest thing you bought online, meanwhile, in lockdown. Okay. Feel free to use the chat. Mm -hmm. Joyce. Uncle, well, ladies and gentlemen, I understand that this class is scheduled for an hour, uh, but my under uh, there's been an update. This class is going to go over a little bit of a half an hour, so I believe one o'clock will uh, will be the ending time. I will run from 11:30 to one o'clock, so we're just going to be an hour and a half. It's a couple of exercise and lecture series that we're going to have within this um, class for today. We understand that if you have to go at precisely at 12.30, we understand you made a decision. However, this session will be recorded for those of you who have to leave early or for those who could not make it today. Thank you. All right. We are going to get started, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to start sharing my screen now. You're going to see that. Just open up this real quick. As usual, for those of you who have been in our classes, some of you are used to seeing my housekeeping. Some of you probably already know it by heart. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time you, you've seen this, but again, this is just protocol, part of our, our OLLI program. Um, we just want to make sure that everyone is comfortable. After all, we are at home, and uh, I'm home, so I do want to welcome you all. Uh, just before we get started with our presentation today from Cara, I want to go over some housekeeping rules and Zoom etiquette. Uh, once again, uh, I do want to remind everyone about our special campaign uh, that we have is Be a Lifelong Learner, Bring a Lifelong Learner, Invite a Friend to Ollie Free Remote Learning Classes. Yes, so if you know anyone that would, uh, you know, they would appreciate learning or you know, taking courses from Ollie, please let them know they do not have to be a member at this time. They could come in and after all it is remotely, it is virtual and it is free. So please share this information with your friend. We have the catalog or if you could have them call me, I will be a very good reference to inform them about, how, about our classes and about our program. Now, before we get started, please, as courtesy reminder, do mute your microphone. This is just to prevent the background noise from interrupting our presenter. Moving forward, if you have a question, uh, the presenter did mention to me that this will be a participation class. So feel free to use the raise hand option at the bottom of your screen. And um, in that case, we will be organized because this is a large number of people that we have today, almost 30. So 
um, to make sure that everyone gets a chance to be heard, please use the raise hand option. If not, I will look around. I am facilitating and I will select your name. Just do identify yourself. When you are mute, just say, hi, my name is Howard. Hi, my name is Nancy, so that we can you know, locate you and know who's talking. Also, uh, we encourage you to use the chat. Uh, our presenter did put a question there for you to answer, so feel free to use the chat. If you have a question, I'll address it in the chat. Also, this presentation will be recorded uh, for university purposes. Um, in case if someone could not make it today, we'll have the recording ready for them to view at their own time. Meanwhile, once our presenter leaves, um, I do ask for those of you to stay just two minutes to complete a course evaluation. It would just, would just tell us your feedback regarding the curriculum content, our spring semester in general, since we are approaching the end of our semester very soon. We appreciate your feedback regarding our courses. I will give you that link towards the end. Now we can get started. I do want to introduce, welcome to our OSHA lecture series. I see some people that are coming in. Welcome, welcome. Please settle down and make yourself comfortable. We are going to get started with mantra and mudra sound and form. Today we have our presenter, Kara. Um, she uh, teaches the sociology department and negotiation conflict resolution and peace building program at Cal State Dominguez Hills. Currently, she is researching the practices of the Asian Druids, comparing their Celtic cosmovision with the Vedic cultures that strongly impacted the development of Kundalini Yoga. Increasingly, her research focuses what it means to take the path of the mystic in the modern world. She is also a certified Gallup Strengths Coach. I do want to introduce you, Kara. Whenever you are ready, I'm going to spotlight your video so that everyone okay. can see. Okay, I'm here. Yes, I'm ready. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gemma, for that warm introduction. And I want to thank Ali for inviting me and Nicole Pata and Gemma for organizing this. Um, presentation. So um, yes, I am a professor. I've been at Cal State Dominguez Hills for 18 years. And recently, I've gone on this path of developing a business, a coaching business that these workshops that I'm giving here and a, a couple other places are sort of going to be these experimental spaces of teaching these kinds of technologies that I've been learning myself over the last, well, a number of years. But Kundalini Yoga, I only started practicing in August. And I've actually personally gotten so much out of it. And I feel like this is, you know, we're in a really important transition in human history right now. Um, it's probably going to be bigger than the Industrial Revolution. Um, and we're sort of on this, you know, plate, we're in this place of um, change where I see there's there's um, a path towards like having a technocratic society run by artificial intelligence and 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 another current that sort of counterbalances that which is the um, human creative potential which is very very powerful right now I never thought as a Gen Xer I never thought that I would even desire to want to create my own business. Um, I was taught that, you know, getting a pension is the, you know, be all end all. Oh, and I do have a pension and I'm grateful for it, but there is so much creative potential um, that can be and is being explored by people all over the world. And so you have this, you've got this um, transition in time that we're going through right now that we're um, expressing, you know, that conflict and it is a conflict. And um, this age that we're living in really um, shows and demonstrates the conflict between the human and the artificial intelligence and the age of mass technology. And, We've all been, that's, that's really been pushed on all of us in ways that we could have never imagined even five years ago. And um, I, before I go on, I would like to see if somebody in the chat um, wants to say something. Do they, do they, have they heard of Kudulini Yoga? Do they don't know anything about it? Um, anybody want to? Go ahead, Denise Jefferson. Uh, that particular 
one I'm not familiar with, I don't think, but I did a mantra um, back when I was about 18 and 19 years old, um, you know, through school. You know, I did a class through school with self-hypnosis. Okay, and, right. And, yeah, and also, you know, with, um, you know, meditation. That's great. Well, see, that that's, I'm glad you mentioned the word self-hypnosis because never before in human history have we been inundated with so much information. And this was sort of prophesized by the people, the, the teachers that came to the U.S. and the late 60s um, that had carried on these traditions. And this particular tradition of yoga has a lineage that sort, sort of relates, does relate to the Sikh tradition, but also Tibetan Buddhism. And mantra is sound and it, um, okay, so like right now we have a gardener out here that, that needs a check, but <laughs> you know, like, see, this is what it is. So the nervous system, is overwhelmed. The human nervous system wasn't really designed to handle what we're handling right now. So these are a set of technologies that can help you ground yourself and slow down in order to be able to, you know, use technology instead of technology using you. So when Denise, thank you so much for saying self-hypnosis, when you use mantras, you're hypnotizing yourself so that other people and other entities can't hypnotize you. Okay, so you're putting, you're putting the program in, you're doing the work to put the program in so that you're not bounced all over the place and you're not consumed by this, you know, this technocracy. And um, so that's, that's really one of the great benefits of this tradition. And um, so, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk a little bit. Okay, you know what? Here's the doorbell. I will be right back. I have to um, pay the gardener. <laughs> That's all right, Cara, thank you. Uh, for those of you, um, I did in the chat put a uh, uh, document for you to review. It's a document uh, I came from our presenter, Kara. It's Mantra and Mudra Workshop. So it is a Word document. You could click it and it would open. Um, you don't have to do it right now because it could um, it would open a new tab, but um, you could take a look at it when you get a chance or when needed. But I believe that would be the workshop meditations about um, two pages. If not, if you cannot open it in the chat, I can always email it to you towards the end of the session. Okay, <laughs> now see that moment could be really stressful for me because I've you know, planned this for so many months and then the gardener came on the wrong day, but you know what? It's just life. So these practices help ground you so that when you're faced with those kind of even minor disturbances, if, you're, if you don't know how to ground yourself and breathe, um, the different aspects of Kundalini Yoga is breath work. So we're gonna do some meditations today. Um, and then there's mudra, which is hand signs and posture that actually activate to be able to direct the energy you're pulling down into your system. Because what you need in this age to support your nervous system is more energy. As a matter of fact, in, in the Kundalini Yoga tradition, um, a lot of feelings um, or people that feel like they're plagued with guilt and shame, that actually what it is is that energy is stagnant, it's not moving. And a lot of um, medical traditions outside of the West, um, acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine, and Ayurveda see that disease is caused by a lack of movement of energy. So Kundalini Yoga through breath work, mantra, um, posture, mudra is all designed to support and strengthen the nervous system. And also that it gives you your sense of sovereignty. And sovereignty is probably a key concept because you want your sovereignty. You want, um, 
your ability to think for yourself, to act on your own behalf, to act in, in service to others and not just to be drawn into, you know, the new whatever Facebook mob is going on about, you know, because you just get dragged into some kind of political fight about something that really doesn't have anything to do with you. Um, so uh, I'm gonna, if you listen to the mantra, I have some mantras on here that go along with the meditation. Listening to a mantra is beneficial. Saying the mantra or even copying the sounds in the chat on the top or maybe at the bottom, Gemma posted, you know, there's, there's the, um, the mantras that we'll be using today. But if you just sit and listen, it's, it's fine. You get a benefit out of it, okay? It'll, it'll ben be beneficial to you. And if this isn't something that resonates with you because it doesn't, you know, not everything is about, you know, you might not align with this, these practices, I will give you two practices out of what we do today that, I, that I'm going to say for those of you who are interested, if you want to try to do this, it would take six minutes every day to do two different practices and do it for 40 days and see if it changes your, your life for the better. So you gain more control over your, your physical form, your, you gain more control over your emotions. It's not you don't control them, but you, you just understand them and you can be at peace with them as you move through this world that is full of, oh, I mean, let's, let's be honest, it's insanity basically at this point, but you can be creative. You can unlock your own creative potential through this and not be, um, let's say just, you know, treated like a marionette or a robot, right? We don't wanna be a robot. We don't wanna be a zombie. We wanna be a human being that is a creator. So we want to be creators. That's that's what we're that's what humans are meant to be. And um, let's see. Uh, so in our in the modern era, we've talked about you know uh, DSM five six four talks about acute and um, acute depression and chronic depression. Well, in the technological age we're living in, uh, a lot of uh, Kundalini Yoga scientists talk about cold depression, and cold depression happens. When we feel that technology is smarter than us, our computers are smarter than us. And, you know, I've had those moments with my 10 year old daughter where um, it's, uh, you know, she's trying to get me, help her through her, you know, math homework. And I'm not going fast enough because my brain doesn't work the way hers does. Right. And so even though she's going too fast and I'm trying to say, you know what, in the computerized age, you got to slow down and get in the body. Okay, but she doesn't want to do that. And she can actually do things faster than I can. And, and that's really the flip side of ADD. So um, that what we diagnose as problems is actually that some of the kids are just more advanced on a level, like mentally, their neuron capacity, or they need to be able to do something with their brain, their heightened neuron capacity. And so it gets diagnosed as an illness. The DSM is a diagnostic statistical manual for mental illnesses. Um, and so they had, I think six of them, seven, some of you who maybe work in health industry or, or, or even in schools might know, I think we're on six. So, you know, like one, one of them says that homosexuality is a disease, then they took it out. And so they just decide what is a pathology and what's not a pathology in any given moment in society. So that's, what the psychiatrists use to diagnose people with different mental disorders. So anyway, I want you to try this. Um, I'm gonna walk you through every meditation. It's not gonna be that long. Um, and so each meditation has its own benefits and there's usually several to every everyone and most of them are 11 minutes long or three minutes long. So um, first of all, I just want—is there any other questions that um, people have for me about this before we start and get into more of the? Uh... If you do have a question, please raise your hand. Or raise your hand, or you, or you could put it in the chat. I'm reading the chat as we go. So I don't see anyone yet, Kara. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe we should just get started and then. 
you know, this is an experience like the age that we're living in, according not just to this tradition, but we're, we're moving into a different age. So right now we're in a gray area. So for the past 2,500 years or so, give or take, humanity was about building up structures of hierarchy and, you know, creating governments and authority. And so the saying of, of the older age, which we call in that, in that Vedic traditions, the Kali Yuga is ending now. And now we're moving into something else. And when we have such a profound change, you have these polarity forces at work, where there are people who are like, I mean, you, everyone on this call can think about something that because they had to be on lockdown, that they realized about themselves and their lives, right? Like, like, why do I have to drive to work every day, 20 miles? Like, that's, that's what my commute was. Why do I have to, you know, do I really want to be in this relationship? Um, you know, what, is my job really worth it? Like, is my job really meaningful? Like just people are asking themselves questions that if we didn't have this really terrible pandemic that we might have never asked ourselves, right? And so people are, are moving towards getting a sense of who they are and what they really want out of life because of, of this, this time period that we've been living in. So um, like I said, each meditation I have the list, you know, you don't have to say, you know, you could just sit there quietly. You can, you know, I was, if you want to, you can follow my instructions or just listen. Um, either way, you will get some benefit from it, hopefully. And then when we end, then, you know, you'll have a takeaway of something that you, because I'm a big believer that, you know, if you give a workshop, you got to have something that people can take with them, okay? Why am I always working on someone else's agenda? That's right. That is a great question, Denise. It, that's right. And that's what sovereignty is. Sovereignty is going within. So when we, so I'm gonna start by tuning in and tuning in is what they do in Kundalini Yoga to sort of invoke the divine, however you define that. So that that part of yourself that is essential and infinite that, you're, that that is what is driving your behavior and your decisions every day. And it is about increasing, increasing intuition, the power of your intuition that is constantly being tamped down by larger forces in society. Because if you're going to watch, I don't know, like what do people watch on, you know, it used to be like 10, 15 years ago was cat videos. Um, but now what do people do? It's like, you know, they get addicted to like negative news cycles, right? You can get addicted to anything. And so the second meditation we're going to do is a brief one that's addiction meditation that is designed, and this was thousands of years ago. By the way, these mantras are, some of them are 6,000 years old. Some of them are 10,000 years old. Some of them, we don't even know how old they are, but they have, they have a purpose and sort of being able to clear the individual's mind to be able to, to connect to a to a divinity within themselves. So I'm gonna tune in right now and we're gonna start the meditations um, since um, there wasn't anybody else asking anything, but that the whole point, Denise, is that what Kundalini Yoga does is it allows you to connect with your own sovereignty, it allows you to connect with your own divinity and, and it helps you be able to operate in this world where you can have creative impact, okay? It's not, you know, you, you're not looking outside. That, that Kali Yuga that's ending right now was, the term was, I believe, and what they call, you know, some other traditions call the age of Aquarius now is I know, I know, because it's my inner knowing, and that's what I trust, and that's what I believe in. I don't need experts. I don't need the professor. I mean, you might need them. You need them more as coaches and guides rather than somebody that is telling you what is true. So, so the truth comes from within when you can clear out your, your stuff. So right now, what we're going to do is I'm going to start with an invocation, what we call tuning in. And then um, we are going to I'll do a brief explanation of each meditation. We will do them. Then we'll have question and answer. And then I think we go. So, okay. 
Okay, so here we go. Bring the palms together. Push the palms into the center of the chest. Inhale, squeeze the root point, which is the genitalia and push up. Tip of the tongue, roof of the mouth. Exhale. Inhale. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo Om intelligence meditation first. And the intelligence meditation is basically we're going to do six or seven minutes closing your eyes, looking, uh, closing your eyes, looking at the third eye, rolling your eyes up, and we're going to move the index finger and the middle finger back and forth together and apart, together and apart. Um, these Fingers represent Jupiter and Saturn. And you want to project yourself out into the stratosphere as you listen to the mantra. And then after six or seven minutes, I'll let you know that you inhale and exhale along with the movement of the fingers. Now, paying attention to the movement of the fingers is primary in this. And that helps you increase your focus, especially if you've been on Zoom calls all day. And um, it helps you maintain concentration, which is very much dispersed in the world we're living in. And then after that, we will have a minute of breathing in through the mouth, in and out, as you pump right below the navel, as, as you're Pushing in the navel, you'll be expelling your air and expanding your, your below the navel, your lower um, stomach as you, as you um, exhale. And then we'll roll the shoulders, roll the neck. And this actually, this meditation is to increase your focus and your concentration, but it also releases childhood repressed anger, um, which Pretty much everyone has on one level or another. If it wasn't from your own childhood, it's ancestral. So when we go into interactions with people on an everyday basis, a lot of times we carry this, these energies with us. And by doing this, I do it daily. 
um, it, it dissolves that so that you can interact with people on a more just human, like a more clean level. So that's, um, that's the intelligence meditation and we're gonna start um, with that. So let's see.
Okay, everyone, inhale as you open the fingers, exhale as you close. Now keep the fingers wide and tight and O mouth breath. Inhale and hold, squeeze the body, hold the breath. Think about the kind of energy you wanna bring into your day. Inhale once again, hold. Exhale, inhale last time, hold. Squeeze the body. And exhale, roll the neck, roll the shoulders, stretch the jaw. Okay, so, okay, so that's, um, that's the intelligence meditation. So um, the next meditation that we're doing, does anybody, if, if, I'm, if anybody wants to ask a question in the chat or unmute themselves, they can right now. How do you stretch your jaw? Open your jaw as you're moving. Open your mouth and just like, just stretch it like you were going to the dentist. You know what I mean? And they try to stick things in there. Yeah, because people carry a lot of tension in their jaws and a lot of anger actually gets, you know, trapped there. You know, like I used to have TMJ when I was a kid. I, I used to, I, when I was in my twenties, I, I had it. Like at night, the grinding of the teeth. And, um, and so like, sometimes that's like trapped anger that's there. So by doing this meditation, it'll help relieve that. Um, out of your body because it's it's trapped in your body basically so these meditations help you do that and so that's a good segue to the next meditation which is called the addiction meditation and what this does do it three minutes you can do it to 11 minutes you know usually in kundalini yoga it's like you could do something for three minutes, 11 minutes or 31 minutes because those are sacred numbers and all of that so um so this we're gonna like take our palms and we're gonna put the tips of the fingers on of our, our, our palms and we're going to gently put them 45 degree angle gently on our temple right so temple our, of our brain and instead of having a mantra that we say out loud we say it to ourselves while gently pushing the mol back molars together and we say it's in the, it's in the um sheet that i that Gemma sent you um it's sa ta na ma Sa ta na ma, gently squeezing the back molars together along with each of the sounds, sa ta na ma. Okay, so we'll start now, and it'll, this will be three minutes.
Also bring your eyes to the third eye point. Tip of the tongue, roof of the mouth. Feel energy coming from the crown chakra through the third eye, project through the third eye. This is reprogramming, or it's undoing programming that's in your system. That's why it's called the addiction meditation. Okay, inhale, hold, and exhale. There's people that, you know, when they work with Kundalini Yoga um, teachers, like you'll just give them one simple meditation to do based on something that they're particularly struggle, struggling with, and they'll just do it. And, and like that one little thing can make a huge difference. And it just depends on the person and how that how that meditation resonates with you. So that's a really important one because we are actually more programmable than ever like now. And so that helps you undo patterns of behavior. And if we go into the next meditation. Cara? Oh, oh yeah? Uh, Denise had her hand up. Okay, yes, go ahead. I was asking a question about the first meditation and when you do your fingers in and out, do you do it in a fast motion first? You can do it. You, you just figure out your own rhythm. You just, mm -hmm. you, all you do is focus on the movement, so focusing on the movement of the fingers. And, you know, there's different things that they teach you how to do. Like you're, you're looking at Jupiter and Saturn and Jupiter and Saturn are considered the teacher planets. Jupiter teaches with grace and expansion and just abundance. And Saturn is the sort of the disciplinarian, right? So you imagine Jupiter and Saturn um, coming together and moving apart, coming together, moving apart. And then you start to coordinate it with the breath and then you do the breathing. Um, but you know, you can find all of this online. It's so, it's so easy. Like you go on YouTube, just put intelligence meditation. You can see it and, um, but yeah, it's, uh, you just, you know, it, the thing about Kundalini Yoga is that, you know, you don't have to be perfect at the practices. You just, the big thing is putting in the effort to do them. That's because the effort 
without attachment to outcome is really what is going to change you and change your sort of patterns, right? Because it's all about patterning. And I, I do want to say this before we go on to the next meditation, because a lot of what they do in yoga, and I'm not going to do that much yoga because like, I'm just trying to figure out how to share a screen right now. You know, like I, I figure I got through two thirds of a university teaching a university class. I can do a workshop, but I don't have like the, the skill level to do what I would normally do, but I want to give you guys a little bit of everything. But one thing I do want to say, and this is more of a, um, on the history point is that, so, so when we talk about karma, um, a lot of times the way that we're ta it's talked about is as if it's about cause and effect, or you did something bad in a lifetime, so you're going to get a payback in this lifetime. And that's, that's really not what karma is. In the Vedic traditions that the yoga and the Tibetan schools of mystery schools understand it. So that's more of a Judeo-Christian filtering of the idea of karma. So instead, if you can look at karma as just that, you know, we've been through 8.7 billion lifetimes and we have patterns and, and there are patterns that even don't have to do with this lifetime, but they exist in us. So the whole purpose of doing these meditations is to allow yourself to see the pattern, to be aware of the pattern so that as you're aware of them, you become more capable of shifting the pattern. It's, it's just a pattern, that's all it is. And um, it's not about blame and shame and guilt and all, you know, all that stuff that sort of, you know, many of us have, you know, learned through, you know, certain religious traditions. So it's more, it's more about, okay, like I have, you know, I have certain capabilities, I have a mind, the unconscious is extremely powerful. And a lot of people don't know this, but, you know, as a, I mean, I, I read a lot of depth psychology. Um, Carl Jung was very much interested in Kundalini Yoga and his difference of understanding the unconscious in terms of Freud, like in contrast to Freud, was very much, you know, he learned a lot, his understanding of the unconscious and how it actually operates in the human system from Kundalini yogis that he visited in the 1920s. And so, so it is really just understanding what the patterns are and to make them bring light to them. That's what a guru is. A guru is somebody that just, it's about bringing that what is in the shadow, which is all of Jung's work into the light. That's all it is. So you're taking something that is, you know, running you like a robot, and then you're, you're bringing it into awareness so that you can sort of navigate how to shift that, that pattern. That's, that's, all, that's all you're doing. So um, Nicole asked about the daytime grinding. I had nighttime grinding as a young person. I don't, I don't grind my teeth anymore, but that's something like in the jaw, a lot of anger and in the shoulders and tension in the neck is, is, is repressed anger. So that's what we wanted to get, you know, sort of undo every time we do the intelligence meditation. So um, let's see, we're, God, we're getting... I might not be able to do all these meditations depending on how long. We're going to go one more. I'm going to share a screen again. And this is because we do um, we do movement of the body because Kundalini Yoga is very much about the glandular system, making sure the glands are functioning properly, including the pineal gland, which is you know the source of our knowing that's outside of our you know our physical observation of the world. Um, it's very, very important in Kundalini Yoga because that really helps you navigate, especially when you're dealing with lots of proper. Will, will I come back? Um, yes, I will. Be, yes, I, I, I already, I already talked to uh, Gemma about maybe doing a couple of different versions of this class where I do different meditations. But I have a feeling we only have one more. Um, time for one more meditation if we're going to have a discussion. So this is more of a, a, a Kriya, which is about moving the spine, go from left to right for 90 seconds. And then I will point the other way. And then you go from left to right for the other 90 seconds. And really moving the spine, moving the energy up and down the body. It's important for all kinds of diseases, all kinds of 
you know, stagnation that happens in the body. And especially now when we get so like our brains just seem separate from our bodies when we're on Zoom all the time or on social media. So I'm going to share a screen one more time. God help me that I can <laughs> figure out how to do this properly. Um, let's see. Um, where are we? Okay, we're going to do this or a minute, three minutes rather. Left to right. Okay, return to neutral position, inhale, hold, and exhale. Now we're at 1227 and I know some people, how many people are gonna stay like another 20 minutes or, okay, anyone else? The majority are. Okay, so I'll do one. <laughs> I overestimated what I could do in this amount of time, which, you know, that's just, um, that's okay. So I'm going to do one more meditation. And actually, because I want you all to take away two of these to see if after 40 days of doing them, if it makes a life change. And this is the breath of fire. And the breath of fire is the pranay what we call it pranayama, which is breath work. It equal um, inhale and equal exhale out the nose and you pump with the navel. So as the, the navel goes in, you exhale as it goes out when you inhale. And you always connect that to up in, in your breathing. 
Um, so this is energizing. This gives you more energy. You can do this driving. You know, you don't want to do mantras driving because you can just easily get in an accident. You know, you start going into another place. I don't, I don't recommend doing mantras while you're driving, but breath of fire, you can always do for a minute here, a minute there. It will put you back in your body and it'll create more chi in your body. So um, you want to have like a little bit of a sound here. Um, I was going to do ego eradicator, but I'll just do Gyan Mudra, which is the Jupiter finger, and you lay it on your on your knees, the hands on your knees. And we, we're going to do this for three minutes, and then we'll have some time for discussion. So um, what should, how should the fingers be again? I'm sorry, Kara. Oh, no, no worries. There's no, I mean, believe me, I'm so happy that you're here. Believe me, I, I'm blessed that you're all here <laughs> and listening to this. Like this, it's the index finger and the thumb. Just, just so you know, since, we're, since I'm going to cut out a few of the meditations, the thumb represents the ego. This represents Jupiter, Saturn, the sun and Venus, and Mercury. So they're all different mudras and they all have different, they're calling down different energies into the body as we do our breath work, our meditation. Um, so that's what a mudra is. It's directing a, a energy in a particular direction. So just like the okay sign, you lay, you lay your hands on your knees and then you start breath of fiber, which is equal, in, equal inhale, equal exhale, pumping the navel for three minutes. This is what we're gonna do. As the music starts, let's see, I can actually get the, Thing to go. Let's see. Side is 
Inhale, hold. And exhale. Good job. So if you wanted to experiment with any of these meditations, I would suggest the addiction meditation and what we just did with breath of fire because you can do it anytime and it will energize you. It'll clean, you know, they claim it actually helps cleanse the blood of toxins. Um, it has a lot of benefits to it and it is also very energizing and we need to energize our nervous system, you know, as we, you know, move into this new computerized digitalized age. So um, with that, it's 1234. Um, okay, questions or comments, please. What is the relationship of chakras and yoga? Joyce, thank you very much. Um, it's a system, chakras are, it's a chakra system of understanding the human body in yoga. So they're actually not the only, the Vedic cultures, which actually precede Hindu cultures, look at eight chakras are actually chakras above that that go up into the heavens and then down into the earth and the crystalline grid that lies underneath the earth. Um, so, you know, it's, the, I mean, just understanding the chakra system is really important to yoga. So, um, and a lot of, you know, the modernist, even from that, the, the age that we're moving out of sort of um, disparage the lower chakras, right? Which is the root chakra at the genitals, the, the sacral chakra, chakra beneath the, the, in the navel point. And they all have meanings of part of human existence. They, they also relate to the planets. Um, they also relate to just, you know, the whole, it's a whole cosmology. So it's very, very integrated. I mean, you can get so much online about about that uh, about the chakra system you know you're opening closing like this third eye here that's a chakra that's you know um your pineal gland that opens up your intuition that you can know without having to see things in a concrete objective way so that was a very good question anybody else have any questions coming uh first of all thank you uh, this has been great. This is my first uh, half hour with you, and I'm hoping that I'll be back soon. Uh, how often are your classes offered now? I, I, this is my first time, Susan, and I'm, a, you know, I'm a professor. I've been here a professor for 18 years. I'm, you know, beginning uh, the, the journey um, of starting a coaching business. I, you know, offered to do this for Ollie a few times. I might do a couple of related classes. One that will be related to this about opening your heart and communication. So I would do different meditations, some of the same ones. And now I know how many ones I can do in an hour and a half. <laughs> so that, well, so. I, I, my other, two other questions, but one question is, as we were doing this exercise, this meditation, um i uh swear i before we reached the end i was falling asleep and i think if it continued i would have been asleep it is so <laughs> well you know what you can get that online if you're on spotify like uh that's it so you can get you can actually listen to mantras to go to sleep that's a very certain mantras are very good for like just clearing you out and helping you relax and yeah it's a that is a beautiful mantra. There's actually a meditation that goes along with that one, but I sort of combined two of them because I didn't have enough time. And that's, you know, you go, you, you put your hands together like this. You say, sare, sa, sa, sare, sa, sa, sare, sa, 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 sarang, the lotus above your head. And then, hare, 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 And you do that over and over again. And it's supposed to be actually one that you do for the full moon, but it's like, it's, it's like, like building like your internal peace. And also it's a good one. If you have a lot of people that are hating on you in your life right now, like you just repel their negativity with that. So, so yeah, it's a, it's, they're very powerful. These mantras are extremely powerful. You can use mantra as medicine. It's medicine. Like you can find ones that you relate to. There are thousands of them. I've only been doing Kundalini yoga for like, like I said, since August. And, um, 
you know, it's like, it's changed my life. I mean, I'm, I've got problems, but I'm just a much happier person. So what an eye opener, didn't realize growing in the teeth, stiffness, yeah, okay, anger, connection with technology. Yeah, because, you know, look, we have a society that is, you know, we've got big tech, big pharma, big government. And I mean, the battle that we have now is that there's people that feel like they want to have an external answer for everything. So even me growing up, I'm a Gen Xer, you know, it's like the doctor tells you about what's good for your health. The teacher tells you what to learn. The government official t- tells you what policy that you need to have. And it's like, it, it's like that's being inverted now to where it's like, no, people actually have a lot more creative potential than they ever, probably they've ever had in human history. But you also have these forces that are, you know, I mean, here's an extra, here's another exercise for you. Aside from the addiction meditation and the breath of fire, Every morning when you wake up and turn on your computer, your computer, look around for 20 minutes and ask yourself this question. What does AI want me to think about what the nature of reality is? Right? Just, you know, <laughs> puppies being tortured everywhere or whatever. You know, like that's, that's your consciousness, yeah. right? Your, your data, all of our data is being exploited. Like, I've seen people say we, we don't even live in a capitalist society right now because even if if workers were exploited under capitalism, there was still a contract between the employer and the employee. Now our data, you know, we're we're going to be we're Facebook Live, right? Mark Zuckerberg owns all of us, and so um, you know, but we we do have a right to sovereignty, and that's our nature. Our nature is being creators and learning how to create. So the next two workshops I'm thinking about doing with Ali. One is about like having a creative open heart in relationship related to this theme that that we already have. And then the other one, I was like, laugh, I was joking a little bit, like how to be a creative genius because we all are creative geniuses. We just, you know, our generations, you know, that preceded us most of the time did not have the opportunity. But I'll tell you, I, I hadn't taught in three years. Before the lockdown, I was faculty development director, so I, I was doing another thing. I had to learn Zoom, and I'm still learning it, obviously. Um, but, you know, out of 25 students, like four or five of them started their own businesses. And I'm just like, I would have never seen that before. It's like, it's such an exciting time to be alive, and it's also a really terrifying time to be alive. What books, YouTube, would you recommend? You know, I, I, I learned... Go to Rama Institute for Yogic Science. They're in Venice, California. That's where Yogi Bhajan, sort of when he came from uh, from India to teach the Westerners about a particular brand of yoga. I mean, that's where I, I, I took, I do take classes there. I, um, you know, learned a lot from them. So there, you can go to Venice. They still have, oh, you can go. I haven't been there yet, but you know, you can go to their studio in Venice, California, and it's beautiful. And they do, that's where I learned all the stuff in the last eight months. And they always say to you, tell, tell every, all their students, you know, learning is a superpower. So it never goes away. It's learning is a superpower, right? And so, um, so you, everybody's sort of like just helping guide each other through this process. Will you offer yoga where, I, I mean, I would love to go to the, I mean, I would do how to do the technology stuff. Um, when, I, when I figure out how to do the technology stuff, I will be able to do more of the physical yoga. I was trying to keep it simple and I couldn't even, I had seven things I was going to do. We got through four. So, um, so yeah. Kara, we'll help you on that. We currently have a, um, a um, Tai Chi class going on. So we help okay. one of our members do that. So we'll be more than happy, happy okay, to work. Okay, okay. Well, I appreciate that, Nicole. And I appreciate I appreciate all of you for being here and just exploring something new and different and something that some people consider weird and out there. But I'm telling you, like, I, I'm a happier person and, I, and I'm much more resilient. And it, and it just doesn't, it affects everything in my life. It's like how my parenting style, like the way I relate to people at my work, um, what how I Kara, think about myself. So, if I may, this gives us a good example. I wanted to lead into a question and open it up again. Um, 
you are in the um, College of Negotiation Com or the Program of Negotiation Conflict Resolution and Peace Building. How does this relate to that also? Um, is it the peace building okay. part? Well, I think it absolutely, Nicole, that's an excellent question. Um, that program, I think, is going to be the, one of the ones that takes off into the future because all of our institutions, I'm sorry, the courts are overwhelmed. They can't handle, it, it can't just be about punishment. It can't just be, they're overwhelmed. Like people don't feel satisfied in any of their institutions. So it doesn't matter what institution you're talking about, healthcare, education, the court system, relationships, marriage, all these things that were handed down to us from older generations People are just starting to question saying, well, I don't know if this is how I want to go about doing this thing this way. And so developing your own internal sovereignty, Nicole, and being able to say what you think without fear of judgment of others is going to make you exponentially impactful. That will make you stand out above the crowd. And I'm going to tell you, I have my dream for the next year. I have two courses that I'll give pieces on here for free, but I'm I'm gonna get gonna get paid. Um, you know, I'm gonna start my own um, uh, my own courses that will be paid for online workshops. So one of them is gonna be called Charisma, and Charisma is about developing that sovereign self and how to do that and how to like build from your own, you know your own inner knowing and, and be able to bring that out into the world. Okay, so charisma. So certain practices, some of it will be kundalini, kundalini yoga. Some of it will be other, I have a lot of certificates. So like at, at the Rama Institute, they talk about certificate consciousness. Like, it's like, look, I got a, you know, I got a BA like 25 years ago. Nobody asked, asked to see it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> can you do the job? Can you show the skills, right? So that's, we're in the age of experience, not the age of information. You can get all the information you want anywhere, right? But I'm, I hope that I gave you a positive experience today, something that you can take with you, something you can frame. I didn't talk about frames today. So that's one class. The other class that I'm going to do after Glamour, and Glamour is going to be about being able to project your creativity to influence a situation in a positive direction for yourself and for whoever you're influencing. So those are my two, those are just ideas like in the imaginal realm. <laughs> oh, I know. So somebody used my Zoom link. So I see myself congratulating myself, but I think I know who that is. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Judy. You know, you can email me. I, my email is on there if you have questions, you know, but the internet is, you know, it's infinite. The infinite, but so are you, you're infinite too. And I just really appreciate having the, the opportunity to be here today. Um, let's see, how many people are left? 18. <laughs> let's see. I don't know, you know, this isn't my normal Zoom. So let's see, participants. Okay, 18, hey, that's pretty good. So um, more questions and then we'll have a closing prayer, by the way, so at the end of a kundalini yoga session, they do a prayer called Long Time Sun that actually comes from a Scottish band, an experimental folk band in the 60s called the Incredible Strings. And it was like this really crazy psychedelic song that they did that was very popular at one time, but they refrain from it, the way they do refrains from the, the prayers. So some of, some of the mantras come from Sikh morning prayers. They take pieces of repeat them. Um, and um, that Scottish band so lives in immemorial with this tradition and this um, lineage, um, spiritual lineage. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, so this has been, it's being flexible, being adaptable. You got the gardener coming out the door asking for a $200 check. You know, what I mean? it's just like, <laughs> you know, you're supposed to be here tomorrow, but you know what? It's life. So, so we're going to be thrown things, right? So, um, you know, um, is there, does, is there any other questions? Anybody want to, um, please do your evaluations. You know, you got your Ollie there. 
Um, thank you to the extended extended education. But come yeah, back. Come um, back. yeah. Go ahead. They come come back soon. Oh, thank you, thank you. You know what? I appreciate you all. I want you all to stay beautiful and stay free. Okay, because we're meant to be free and we're meant to be beautiful and we're meant to be creative. Well, that's thank you. what I mean. Like that's it. <laughs> we, uh, when you learn, Susan, you're learning. Your your mind is growing. You're you're warding off all of these you know elements that have been part of the modern world. Like you know, move your body, move your energy, and um, you know, I'm just learning this now, and you know, it's fun. Remember, it's a superpower. So, um, oh, that was my. Um, okay, so is there anything else? And it. I'm going to give people a minute. Any other questions? And then I'm going to, oh my God, share the screen again, which is like the bane of my existence right now. So we'll, we'll do the closing prayer. And thank you. Um, I, you know, I've got a face. I'm going to do a Facebook for my coaching business sometime this summer when I, I'm not having to deal with my school and my daughter's school at the same time. But um, anyway, it's going to go, it's going to go on my YouTube. So I've got a, I've got a YouTube channel called Outer Limits, but I haven't put anything on there. So this might be the first thing, just so you know. <laughs> so, I know that was a nickname in college that I was Outer Limits. <laughs> well, we all have a nickname. We'll have to share, we'll have to share our nicknames next time. <laughs> I have to ask, Howard, can can you hear me, Howard? Yes, I can. Okay. We're talking about nicknames. And I have to ask, and forgive me if this is offensive, but were you called Zoogie? Oh, well, it's called a lot worse than that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When I was in a fraternity in college, they called me Crazy Howie. I guess they had oh. four. I like I like the idea of Zugi. That it just sounds perfect. We close with this. So Namaste. You guys have a blessed day.
Here, hold on. Gemma, I can't hear you. Sorry about that. I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm still getting used to that. It's been a year. Um, thank you, Cara. No, I don't know what it, I don't. I just watched. Thank you, Cara, so much um, for running this session. And yes, definitely in the summer, we would love to have you back. So feel free okay. to message me, and I'll definitely you know right. we'll something. Okay, out. great. Who wants to be a creative genius? So you know what I mean. Well. <laughs> All right.